Here's what's coming up on today's show. But retirement is not the end. It's, it is an end, but it's not the end. It's opportunity. It's that do-over chance. This is the Retire Happy Podcast with John Amarino, fiduciary financial advisor at Securus Financial in the San Diego area. And Thomas O'Connell, president of International Financial Advisory Group, Inc. in Rockaway, New Jersey. Together, they'll be keeping retirement happy from coast to coast. Welcome back to another episode of the Retire Happy Podcast. I'm your host on the West Coast, John I. Marino, and I am joined by my host on the East Coast, Mr. Tom O'Connell. Tommy, how you doing, buddy? Yo, yo, yo. Everything's going great. How about you, John? Good, good. It's uh, we're we're doing a little June gloom here. So my my wife turned forty yesterday, and uh, she's like, "Ah, oh, this oh, nice. weather, this weather sucks." And I'm like, <laughs> "It kind of feels like Seattle. It's been going on for so long." But uh, we've got uh, some brighter days ahead. We're we're leaving on uh, vacation for the Caribbean on Friday, so that'll be fun. Nice. Uh, last week we had our own version of California. We had the uh, smoke and smog and ash from that uh, Canadian fire. So we had uh, three very hazy days, kind of le- like when uh, Pompeii was overtaken by Mount Vesuvius. Yeah, yeah, no, I mean, we've we've lived that, obviously, with the uh, the fires here, too. So glad uh, glad that cleared up for you, though. All right, folks, so on today's episode, is uh, it's a great episode. It's a powerful episode. We've had some phenomenal guests, Tommy. I mean, Ed Slots, the Don Graves, but um, I actually previewed out this show uh, on social media because, you know, knowing IRS code, IRA, investment things, yes, it's all important. But, you know, Tommy and I firmly believe in it's not just return on investment, it's really return on life. And uh, this show's going to, this is like the foundation of the show. This this episode right here is one of the foundations of why Tommy and I did this show, and it's it's we want you to be happy in retirement. So today's guest is a phenomenal guest. He's a retirement lifestyle coach and the founder of Bowie Coaching. And the way we found this gentleman was back in 2020 when I was taking my uh, retire my RMA my retirement management advisory designation course. He was the one of the keystone speakers. And uh, he talked about the true fulfillment of retirement. And um, it was eye opening. And, uh, you know, I was telling him before the show, I said, honestly, I I reached out to you because his speech was probably one of the most impactful speeches I've ever heard. And, And Tommy, we've heard some great, great speakers over, you know, the 10, 20, 30 years Um, but what he really talks to is some of the, you know, things that people don't always want to face, but man, if you can get it, if you, if you can solve these issues, you're going to, you're definitely, your life is going to be really impacted. So today's guest is Mr. Larry Jacobson. He is, as I said, the founder of Bowie Coaching, and he was a successful executive by himself. But now he's known for his coaching and leadership, entrepreneurship, and is a certified world-class speaking coach. He is the author of a book that I just began reading, The Boy Behind a Gate, which actually covers his six-year odyssey of sailing around the world. So, And within Bowie Coaching, he has a groundbreaking program called Sail Into Retirement which combines home study and personal coaching uh, for retirees all around the world. So without further ado, I am very excited to introduce Mr. Larry Jacobson. And this week's guest, the founder of Bowie Coaching, Larry Jacobson. It is great to be here with you guys. I'm still laughing though a little bit from our previous uh before on air discussions um but it's great to be here and i look forward to answering any of the questions that you've got for me well thank you for taking time out of your your day larry to be with us and 
and I know you're very passionate about uh, about what you do. And you know, Tommy and I have talked about it in between the emails that we shared with you when we approached you about doing the show. How how um, you know we we just in in the emails we we know the passion that you have for helping people. So thank you for taking the time out of your day. Absolutely. It's what I do now. So, so obviously you have a successful, uh, retirement coaching program. You're a world-class speaker. Uh, you obviously one heck of a, uh, an instructor. I can account to that, um, from the, the course that I listened to. Um, but, you are also a, a very accomplished sailor after being a, uh, a high-powered executive. So tell us about your life journey a little bit. Yeah, sure. Um, so I spent uh, 20 years in the corporate world, starting out as a salesman for a marketing uh, incentive travel company. And uh, 20 years later, I uh, was the CEO uh, of the company. And after 20 years in the industry, it was a great business. Um, I decided this is it. What, what am I doing? I need to, you know, what, what is my dream, my ultimate vision that I wanted to do in my life? Well, ever since I was 13 years old, when I taught myself to sail down in Long Beach, I had decided that I was going to sail around the world. And of course, a lot of kids, you know, say things like that. Oh, I'm going to do this or that. But I held on to that dream and held on to that vision. And uh, 33 years later, I was able to make it happen. I sold the company for just enough money to tease me into thinking I could afford to go sailing around the world. And it turns out it wasn't quite enough. But uh, so I ended up selling the company, bought a boat and left. And I spent the next six years sailing all the way around the world. And it's what uh, when I came back from the trip, it was interesting because I got a call from a friend of mine who was a CEO of a big company in San Francisco. And he said, hey, Larry, can you come over and give me some uh, some help on something in the business? And I'm like, yeah, sure. So I go over and I said, so what do you need help with? Uh, personnel, finance, you know what? And he goes, no, I know how to run the company. I'm the CEO. He says, I want to know how you did it, how you got out how you left your identity as a CEO and became a sailing bum. And uh, I kind of, you know, took me aback, but I gave him some, you know, some brief answers. Hadn't really thought about it a lot. A week later, another CEO called me, who was a friend of the first CEO. And I went into his office, same questions. And so I thought, well, maybe I'm onto something here. So I took a year and I reverse engineered all the thoughts and actions and and uh, you know that I that I took going from CEO to sailing bum, and um, it was uh, it was eye opening. And so I created that course, sail into retirement, based upon everything that I went through. And I believe it's everything that everybody goes through when they finish their work career and are then looking. Well, now what do I do? You know, the, as you know, the number one question that in retirement is, do you have enough money to retire? That's what all the billboards talk about. You know, the, the television commercials, you know, everything is, do you have enough money to retire? And, uh, and who's going to watch that money for you and everything. So we know, of course, the answer to that question is you guys. But then this, the second question is, okay, now you've retired. Now what are you going to do? And it is a, an enormous question that people don't really realize until it happens to them. And so they're not, they don't see that it's going to be painful. And for the most part, like a lot of retirees say, well, I'm just going to wait and see what comes up. You know, I think that something will, will come up and plus I'm going to golf. And uh, of course, my question then is, um, how much golfing do you plan to do? You're going to live 10 to 20 years longer than the pre generation. And that, well, I've got the grandkids. Okay, well, how much babysitting do you really want to do? Um, and, and so then the people start to think, well, but I'm a retired cop, you know, I, I, I mean, that's what I do. That's what I did. Yeah. But what are you going to do now? Yeah. Is the big question. Right. And, uh, for a lot of people, uh, you know, I have clients, I have one a client in particular who was a high powered attorney and not only was his name on the door, his name was on the building and, you know, he retired and the next day he called in and he says, Hey, do you need me for anything? 
And the response was, no thanks, just enjoy your retirement. He hangs up and he's thinking, oh, wait a minute, now what do I do? Why should I even bother getting out of bed? And so, you know, the, the answer to that is, I mean, I, I try to jump right in quickly with, you know, how can I help you? But the answer to that is, is a transition to a new identity, not relying on, I was, I'm a retired nurse or I'm a retired cop or I'm a retired, you know, plant manager or something. No, it's a matter of you, that was then. Let's talk about what are you now and what are you going to be again? Because you get a do-over. Remember when we were kids, we were playing baseball and, you know, the ball would go out of bounds, but did it really. And so everybody was called do-over, do-over, you know, or yeah. a mulligan in golf. Right. Yeah. And you get another chance. You get it. You get to start over again, essentially. And that, but that can be scary for, for people. Yeah. That change is scary. Right. Yeah, you know, yeah. Uh, you, you, you hit on a cu- you hit on a couple of things there, Larry. Where, where I was gonna, you know, kind of my first question to you or question slash statement was uh, one of the biggest problems that we find with people going into retirement is that loss of identity. They've they've uh, created an identity for themselves over the last 20, 30, 40 years as an attorney, a doctor, a cop, a teacher, wh- whatever it is. And That's right. So once you can't identify it as that you you are lost at sea, if you will, using your <laughs> you know your life experience, um, and yeah. trying to get uh, trying to find a course, right? And, and so, what what would you say is maybe the first couple of things that someone either really needs to sit down and think about, truly ask themselves, mm-hmm. or set into motion um, once this plan of retirement starts coming. The fruition. Yeah, excellent question. So I, I'm gonna let me just briefly tell you how, how transitions work. Um, uh, and there are basically three stages of of a transition. And this is the work of uh, William Bridges, by the way, the late William Bridges, nice, great guy. And he kind of was the the guru of transitions. All transitions begin with an end. And I know that sounds counterintuitive, but it's true. So an end, meaning, let's say, graduating or moving or losing a loved one or retiring. So that something ends, and then that puts you into the middle neutral zone, which is, well, now what do I do? And so you're searching, you're waiting, you're hoping, and you're exploring. And the the exploring part is where a lot of people fall down. Uh, they, you need to take a proactive approach to finding what is next. So you're trying different things, maybe. You know, you, maybe you take a part-time job somewhere. Maybe you get on a board of directors somewhere. You either like it or you don't. And then so you, you, if you don't, you, you try something else. And so this exploration stage is really, really important to try things. Now, there's another thing you can do, which is to sit down, as you're saying, Tom, and uh, do visioning, like the vision, visioning is f- looking at a picture of what something might be. And so when you vision what your life could be, uh, you don't look at it from afar, like, like you're a, a movie camera looking at a scene. You put yourself into that scene and then ask yourself, what does it feel like? What am I, am I enjoying it? What, what does this look like? Like if I put myself into a scene of sitting on the beach somewhere and relaxing, if I, when I see that scene, I think, oh, that's boring. And so I think I got to do something else. I got to try something else. So I have to explore and find something else. Once you do find something that, that feel good and makes you feel happy, then that is the third stage. That's, you know, a new job or you found your new, your personal passion you discovered an old passion. Maybe you went to work, you know, for a nonprofit or board of directors, or you know, you're volunteering at your local church or synagogue, or uh, you've gotten into a new relationship or out of an old relationship, or maybe you decide to sail around the world. You know, so there, that, that's the new beginning uh, section. But the visioning, with, without the visioning, you, you can't. You're not going to know what it is that you really want to do. Yeah. And I mean, in that vision, you know, it's easy for a lot of advisors to get caught up. Well, you know, what do you want to do? Do you want to go on 
Viking River cruises and and you know European <laughs> railways, or do you want to just stay at home and garden and be with the grandkids, right? And 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 for a lot of advisors, they go right to the economics of the difference in the two choices. But you know <clears throat> what I've always taken away from you is that it's got to go. It's got to start a lot deeper than that. That that's really the surface level, and you really got to you know, what's your purpose? What's going to give you that drive in life, right? Like you said, uh, you, you, were, you were mentioning, you know, the one gentleman just, you know, he didn't want to get out of bed. He didn't have any more purpose. And and I think that's, you know, correct me if I'm wrong, Larry, is the first thing you really have to focus on with, you know, how Tommy mentioned the vision. What is going to give your life purpose in retirement? That's exactly right. And it's purpose and fulfillment, <laughs> So, for example, when I was went sailing around the world, m- my purpose was very clear. It was going to be for achievement, for to, to achieve this very difficult challenge of sailing all the way around the world. So that was something for me, for myself, that, that made me feel good, uh, it was a big achievement, great, all right, wonderful. When I got home, I was a square peg trying to fit into a round hole. I didn't know what I was going to do and how could I possibly match achieving a dream of sailing around the world? I mean, maybe if I flew to the moon or something, but you know, it's the ultimate, you know, uh, achievement, I think in so many different areas. And so I kind of wandered, wandered for a bit. And then when I got into coaching, what I realized was that by giving back, by helping people achieve their dreams and achieve their big visions, I was getting this feeling of fulfillment that I had never had before. And then I just, and as I started coaching more and more people, I discovered that the happiest retirees are the ones that have purpose, but are also being fulfilled by that purpose. And most of that comes from giving back, teaching, mentoring, helping others, doing a podcast like this, which is helping people, coaching. Um, like I, br- I have brought, you know, the, the price down on my program, Sail Into Retirement, so low because I want everybody to have access to it. And um, that just makes me feel good uh, instead of, you know, charging a whole a bunch, a lot of money for stuff. And I think, you know, the, the, there's the left side of the brain and the right side of the brain. The left side is the analytical side, the money side, mostly probably what you guys find yourselves talking about. And then there's the right side of the brain, which is the passion, the uh, the fulfillment, the purpose. And what I tell people is, you know, you're not going to die happy because you analyze your funds to the point where, okay, I'm going to die with this much money or something like that. Um, but you will die happy if you've been if you've had fulfillment in life and you've had purpose and you've made that purpose a reality. And that comes from helping people, I think. And I think that um, falls in line a lot with what John and our John and my uh, purpose, or if you will, or or what we're trying to accomplish. Because I I think we both find the most happiness when our clients call us and say, "Hey, I was able to pay for my grandkids' college tuition this year," or "I I went on the greatest vacation you know that I ever could have." It's not about the rate of return that we got somebody. Yeah. Or uh, you know the the right asset allocation mix. It's the success that our clients have had in their personal lives that when they call us and tell us those stories, those are the ones that make that fulfill us and say, "Hey, you know what? We are doing a good job, or we are doing the right thing." Absolutely, that's absolutely right. You're giving you're giving back, um, and it, it's your time, and it's also the energy that you're giving, which is. You know, it's not just about the money. It's it's about how do you how do you feel? Yeah, and so it's. Uh, but now let me go on uh, for a minute because people will say, okay, so I've got this big dream. I've got this vision. I see myself doing this, this, and this, and I think that's going to make me happy. How do I do that now? Because when you have a big dream or a vision of, of your of your life, it's a, it's kind of intangible. Like when I decided to sail around the world, wow, okay, what do you need to do to sail around the world? So I had to take that big dream and break it down into smaller goals. And so any everybody has to do this. 
So you, you take this big vision and you break it down into achievable, smaller goals that you can do one at a time. So let's say that um, from the visioning exercises, you decide you want to explore your artistic side and you want to paint, but you know nothing about painting. So you break that down. And so maybe you find a painting class near you. Uh, maybe you watch YouTubes about painting. You decide what medium you're going to use, watercolors or oil paints or whatever. Then you buy the paints and you buy brushes and you create a space in your home for painting. Now you've got these tangible tasks that when you add them all together, they become the whole of, I'm going to paint. So it's important to break these things down into smaller goals. Otherwise, it's too intangible. Yeah. Yeah. And, you know, the the big thing there is giving yourself the reason to get out of bed. And, and whether it is, you know, a new hobby or a passion like you did sailing around the world or serving others. I mean, my mom, I, I believe my purpose is, is to serve others. It was to serve through law enforcement. And, you know, as Tommy mentioned you know, yeah, we would love to get our clients great investment returns, but you really have little control over the market, really no control over the market. But where Tom and I have both taken an immense amount of pleasure is that, that, that service and that positive impact on people's lives. And, you know, and when I was new into this, Tom had a positive impact on my life and it, and it jump started our, our, you know, across the country, you know, very tight relationship and friendship, but really for people, you know, to even just find that, that new passion of helping people. Um, you know, my mom, as, as I mentioned, she's 80 and she goes and she's a Eucharistic minister and prays and, and gives communion to, uh, you know, sick people in the hospital every Wednesday. That's her, her passion. And, um, you know, that's, that's what really drives her in retirement is to still touch the lives of people, um, you know, as, as, you know, as she gets near, you know, the, the end, end stage of life, you know, right? She hopefully has another decade plus, but, you know, she realizes that she's, you know, on the back nine of the golf course and yeah, she really wants yeah. to have that impact on people's lives. What happens to, um, I think that's so, that's a really great story. Um, but what happens to a lot of people is, you know, our lives are basically scripted from the moment that, you know, that we enter kindergarten. Uh, you know, we go through elementary school, then junior high school, then high school, then college, or maybe at the academy or, you know, uh, or apprenticeship or something. And then we go to our work career. And we work our lives. And in business, you go from manager to supervisor to director to vice president to president to the C-suite. Um, if you're in the military, you go from private to general. I mean, there's a path that you take, right? right. Um, uh, you go from, uh, ca you know, cadet to sergeant, right? Um, there's a path that, you, that we take and then it's all scripted for us. What happens is when we retire is you turn the page on your script and it's blank. There's nothing there. there. Nobody told us what we're supposed to be doing when we retire. We didn't know we were going to live this long. We didn't know we'd have this much time. And we always thought it was kind of, kind of, that was the end. But retirement is not the end. It's, it is an end, but it's not the end. It's opportunity. It's that do-over chance. We've forgotten how to do that because we didn't really know. And what I encourage people to do is make a plan. Like your mother, she's got Wednesdays on her plan. Great. Uh, so for someone else, I would say, all right, you're doing that on Wednesday. How about something on Mondays? What do you plan to do? Or maybe on Thursday evenings, you go to bridge. Or maybe Saturday mornings, it's soccer with your grandkids or something. And you start to fill in this calendar. But it's important to, to note that you don't fill in the calendar with just looking for multiple pleasures because a lot of retirees confuse multiple pleasures with uh, purpose or fulfillment and they're not the same yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, elaborate on that what uh, explain what you mean a little bit more sure sure so I tended to, to drop into nautical uh, examples so let's say um, uh, about sailing with with some friends and uh, 
I come in uh, and we're returning back to the dock and I dock the boat perfectly. Okay, that that feels good. That's a pleasure for me to, that I got that I did that perfectly. If I put you at the helm, Tom, and you've never swore, and I teach you how to dock and you dock the boat perfectly, that's fulfillment for me. Mm-hmm. Right. So I, I I feel like I've like I've passed on some knowledge, some wisdom. Uh, you know, that I've helped somebody else do something. Um, and, and I get a much bigger uh, reward from watching you do it perfectly than me doing it. I already know how to do it. Right. Right. And, uh, John, you could probably relate. I can with my daughter and your and your kids. Right. I mean, we both grew up playing sports from the time we could walk to, you know, in, in, well into our 40s. And uh, I know you're what, 50 something now. Right. Um, but with that said, you know, I think I get more joy out of teaching my daughter soccer than I've ever than I ever personally got playing for forty something years. Yeah, yeah, I'm I'm the same way with yeah. Jake. I I mean, just I love I love uh, being out there and and seeing him grow. But you know, Tom, you make a great point with the kids. But I'm gonna when Larry was talking about that, I'm gonna actually. The, the person that came to my mind was two sets of people. Number one was you and then the three mentors. And and I, I, I start with you, Tom, because, again, you were a catalyst for jumpstarting my career. You, you sat down and you took the time to start talking to me about all the things I needed to do, all the steps I needed to do to eventually get to this point in time. But you also taught a lot at the conferences and the three mentors conferences. And the the you know, we and we talked about this with David and and Gary and and the impact that they've made on so many advisors' lives by teaching them how to approach their clients and do things the right way. Mm. But it's not just, oh, you've impacted a thousand advisors. No, you've impacted tens, if not hundreds of thousands of people around this world because of that you know of being that root in that tree that grew to have many branches you know throughout and you know that that's kind of what I thought about you know when Larry was making you know th those powerful statements. Uh, yeah, so it's like the was it the se six steps of Kevin Bacon or whatever it is, right? I mean, oh, six degrees uh, of separation. Starting from six, there you go, six degrees of separation, <laughs> right? So the you know the you. Know, the three mentors touched us and all the other advisors, right? And then we go out and we touch our clients and then our clients go out and touch their families and friends and things like that. So you're right. right. I mean, if we added it up, right. I mean, there could be hundreds of thousands of people that we've had some kind of impact on, whether direct or indirect. Yeah. And, and, you know, and, and even with the podcast, we hope, you know, we, we've known people who have shared this with, other friends, uh, hey, you got you have to hear that, and that, and that's, you know, that's a driving force behind this podcast. It's like multi, -le it's like multi level marketing for goodness. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> for purpose, um, for for true purpose. Yeah, yeah, for purpose. Yeah, we're, we're um, the Mary, we're the Mary um, Kay of podcasts. <laughs> there you go. That's it. <laughs> um, let me point out something else uh, that I just want to make sure that I slip in here that for your uh, listeners um, about retiring, you know, what happens uh, when they retire. Uh, for the first thing that people usually seek is multiple pleasures. And that maybe goes on for six months or a year. And then people start contacting me and, and saying, well, is that all there is? You know, I thought there would be more. I thought I'd feel better in retirement. And the biggest problems that people are running into are loneliness and depression and boredom. And, you know, someone who was uh, president of a company and is now supposed to be tending his roses, uh, that's a pretty screeching halt that they have to come to, or, you know, a, you know a, a sharp turn in their life uh, to, to leave that job of responsibility not only do you leave the job, but you also leave a big part of your social life behind. Yeah, you know, we all, when we were, 
Yeah, when we were working, we had a lot of our friends were from work and whether you see them on a Friday afternoon for a beer best or or whether, you know, maybe you connect, your families have connected and, you know, you do things together. But every day you go to work and you're valued, you're needed. Well, maybe you're criticized, but you're you learn, you're improve, you improve. You know, there's all of these uh, traits that happen to you when you're in the work world. When you stop that career, to be frank, it's boring. I mean, it's people have told me, I wish I was still working. I, I miss it. I want to, I don't, uh, well, what do you miss? Well, I miss the people. Okay, then it's your responsibility in that neutral stage of exploration to find new sources of social connection. And you have to know that 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 was a big loss and you've got to replace it because relationships with people are key to a happiness and long life. So, um, and let me continue on if, if that's all right, that uh, in addition to multiple pleasures, because of the boredom, what's happening now is um, with the uh, boomers and those coming up behind the boomers uh, is a higher rate of alcohol and drug use. And uh, also, in addition to that, and that comes from boredom, in addition to that, suicide rates are way up among seniors. Wow. And that's because they're bored and they don't feel that they're necessary, that they don't feel they're contributing. They don't feel part of something larger than themselves. And that's the search that you need to, that people need to find because loneliness, depression, and boredom have an antidote. And that antidote is purpose, fulfillment, and community. And so each, uh, each person has to actively look to replace all of that that's missing in their lives. Yeah, and, and that's a great, great segue into, into what I was going to bring up is y that segment that you just said, Larry, was to me the most shocking when you were throwing out the statistics of depression and substance abuse amongst seniors, it was a, it was the biggest shock to me because I dealt in, and saw that part of life and other people for 20 years in law enforcement. And I didn't, you know, and you're talking about, you know, people with incredible amounts of wealth and, and prior success. Yeah. And, and you, I just, I, that was a, a world that I didn't see. We, we all know that, Everybody will suffer from depression or or whatnot um, through all walks of life, but to to sit there and hit on those points and and even even more so when it comes into that loneliness is yeah. you know people are dealing with it you know the loss of friends to 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 and spouses especially and and whatever whatever every parent really dreads a loss of their kids, you know, that, that toll it, when, you know, when you're saying that, and I started thinking about those losses, I could absolutely see where those numbers come from. Cause that's, you know, you really in, in this life, you have truly just a handful of close friends. I mean, the that's real right. close people, Very true. you're lucky yes. if you find that one true love in your yes. life. And I mean, I'm not even want to talk about losing your kids, but you know, for me, since 2016 in my transition, having back surgeries and and for a while not being as athletic as I used to be because I was recovering from the back, and then tra transitioning from careers, but really in 20 from 2016 to present day, I've lost three of the closest people in my life, and yeah, and and one of them being my my old partner. And my best friend, you know, watching mm. him deteriorate in, in cancer and try to live life to the fullest and, you know, not having his health and, and him watching him battle his last years of 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 trying to be happy because he knew time was limited and trying to enjoy the little things in life, but also really being in a, an immense pain and suffering and then and then watching his wife you know, watch him deteriorate from the, from the man he was. And then now having to focus with the love of her life being gone yeah. and just, just seeing the, the toll it took on her. But, but then as me, you know, being in my mid forties and having just a close, 
you know, number of people that I hold close to my heart, that, that takes, that took a toll on me, you know, and, and my wife and I have even talked about the toll that loss has taken. So I could just imagine what some of these people are going through, you know, that, um, have suffered that. And, you know, can you kind of talk to what you've seen in your coaching and how you've helped those people overcome that loss of the, the, the one true love? Yeah. Yeah. Well, uh, first let me, let me continue on with, uh, some other statistics, uh, for your listeners. Even if you have not had a loss like that, right? Even let's, let's, you know, you just retired. You have a 40% higher chance of falling into clinical depression the day you retire from work. I mean, that's just mind boggling yeah. um, because, you know, and, and if you think about it, yeah, it's like, okay, I'm working, 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 and now I have nothing to do. Wow, that's depressing. Okay, so it's, and again, it's onto the, the, each individual to not go there by finding other things to replace what they had. There's a 56% higher chance of having a stroke if you cannot state what your purpose in life is. Uh, that is a statistic that just blew me away. Yeah, 56% higher chance of having a stroke if you cannot state what your purpose in life is. Um, okay, here's another one. The average retiree watches four and a half hours of television per day. Now, you know, I mean, I know television has some good movies and things on, and I watch a movie occasionally, but I cannot imagine sitting in front of the TV for four and a half hours and whiling that time away when I could be, I don't know, doing something that was more proactive towards me or towards my society. Yeah. And then, and as you mentioned, as we started the show with, the number one concern of retirees and the biggest problem is that loss of identity. Now, that loss of identity can also, let's transition into uh, uh, losing a spouse or losing a partner. Um, gee, I used to be her partner, or I used to be her husband, or I used to be his partner, or, or you know, her husband, or whatever. And then you, now you no longer are. So, what, you know, that's like when people say uh, uh, on the forum, you click, am I, uh, you check, am I single, am I married, am I widowed? Well, if people who check the widowed box have not moved on yet, right? Yeah. So, and, and moving on is difficult to do. Um, but again, it is about seeking and getting, you know, you got to get up. You have to seek out and find people and uh, programs and classes and get back involved again. It's like, you know, you got to get back on the horse, essentially. Um, I think you had asked me, John, uh, you know, okay, this, someone's spouse dies. They handled everything. They handled all the money and everything. What do I do now? Well, and, and actually, quite frankly, I have a good example of this, which was my mother. My, uh, she never even knew where money came from. She just thought she wrote a check. Well, where does that come from? <laughs> well, that comes from, from dad's uh, account. You know, well, where does that come from? She had no idea, right, what was going on. So take a class, learn about finances, hire a money manager or, or, or an you know, accountant or, hey, ask your financial advisors for help or in finding someone who can help, you know, who can help with that. And then you've got to get up and get back into the social game. It's critical. There was a Harvard study done um, that, that tracked, I think, 750 people over their entire lives and they did, wanted to find out what made people happy in their life, the happiest. And the answer, uh, you can find this on YouTube, by the way. It's a Harvard study. And the answer was uh, relationships, friends, family, spouse, partner. Uh, it didn't have to be the, that one person, but just having relationships with other people. We are social animals. We need to have those connections. Yeah. Yeah, and I, that's why I really love how you have now these fifty-five and up retirement communities, because I have a I have a client that they you know uh, they moved into one and and they love it. They they've said it's actually brought more purpose and more you know they've filled up their calendar where they're not just yes. sitting in and and they weren't big TV watchers, but they would just find themselves sitting in. Uh, you know, the backyard reading the paper all day or, you know, and just not really 
they kind of almost felt like their day was Groundhog Day, and now they're out there, they're yeah. playing, uh, you know, pickleball, they're, they're p- pickleball, <laughs> and you know, and they're you know, they're doing stuff, they're doing bridge, and they're you know they they they're like, man, we we've, we've met so many great couples that you know are are just you know we're 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 doing dinners with our friends you know one or two nights a week and it's just so awesome yep. yes that's you exactly know, you're right finding, you're finding you're finding like-minded people in that community right so you're finding the people that, that have the exact same problems as you the exact same identity issues the exact you know the exact same wishes and wants so uh yeah i i agree but you know those communities have done wonders i'm sure i can and say officially, but I, I could just imagine if I use my logic, uh, what those kind of communities have done to help people. Right. When, when, when I uh, ask, you know, when I first meet someone, I'll say to them, tell me something about yourself. You know, hi, I'm Larry. John, can you tell me something about yourself? About seven out of 10 people will reply, I'm a retired blank. Right, I'm a retired cop. I'm a mm-hmm. retired doctor, or whatever. Um, or, or they'll even say, "Oh, uh, I'm a retired doctor, and uh, now I'm." And they talk about what they're doing for a career now, because the career is what people have focused on in, in certainly in this country more than anywhere else. Is that well, that is how they identify? And I said, and then I say, "Well, no, I didn't ask you what you did for a living. I asked you to tell me something about yourself." Yeah. And it's difficult. It's a challenge for people to say, well, who am I? What do I really identify with um, now that I'm not no longer a doctor? What can I, you know, what should I do? And so I coach people into finding that new identity and helping them discover that. And, and we start, quite frankly, we start with the visioning exercises and finding out, what, you know, and then we go into a, a passion quiz, you know, which is answering all kinds of questions about what you like and what you don't like and, and, and all that. And I might throw in here that, uh, if I can, that on my um, uh, training site, the buoytraining.com, the course, Sail to Retirement, starts with the visioning exercises. And those visioning exercises are free for anybody to sign up for. So, uh, and then if they want to continue with the course, of course, that's fine. And they get, you know, uh, much more depth into the course. But the first exercises, the three first three lessons are free and that I encourage everybody to take advantage of that. Yeah, absolutely. Because it all, that's the foundation, right? You're building your retirement yes. house. It, it, yep. it, the, the purpose, the fulfillment, the retirement, and even the money all surrounds that vision of what you want. That's right. In retirement. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And, you know, the two of the hardest exercises I find when I'm, when I'm working, especially with newer clients are, Okay, um, do you have a budget? And then asking them those self introspection type questions, like uh, I, I'll typically end a session with, okay, if if we were sitting here a year from now, what would you have liked to see an accomplish? Or five years from now, what is where is it that you want to be? And to your right. point, Larry, it's very hard for some people to even be able to comprehend that far down the road, and it's not that far. <laughs> That's right. It's not that far. But I, what I find is that nobody thinks about this. Um, uh, people put more time into deciding which car to buy, you know, or their, their Netflix playlist or something uh, that then they do into what do I want to do in my retirement years? And mm-hmm. the one thing is that there are a lot of retirement years. Um, you know, my parents, you know, I'm a baby boomer, but my parents, you know, their idea of retirement was work hard and then play golf on Saturdays. And then when you get to retire, you you play golf more and then you die. And there yeah. wasn't another there wasn't another career option. Another wasn't another 10 or 20 years to just, you know, to do something. And now there is. Yeah. I mean, you can find people nowadays that their retirement life is even longer than their work life. Yeah, right? absolutely. And so now you got to fill, you have to fill 20, 30 or 40 years with something to do. That's right. And so, uh, you know, are you going to just let those years drift by aimlessly or you want to come up with something that you should do or that you want to do? 
Yeah, and yeah, I just and that's it's, where it, your program comes in. Sure. Yeah. Yes, and that's what I help people do. And we, by the end of the program, uh, they have a plan, and the plan is it, it could be simple, it could be complex, but if they've got a vision, we've broken that vision down into into tangible goals. Um, I, I help people through uh, the, a SWOT analysis of themselves. You know, what are their strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats? Uh, we analyze the risks, you know, because people are saying, well, gee, that's risky if I decide to take a year and go to traveling. Well, how risky is it? Is it really? Or, you know, is it something that you can live with? And we analyze all that. Um, and then a big problem that people have is making decisions. You know, a lot of people are going, well, gee, I'm not sure. I think I'll just wait and see. And well, you just made a decision not to make a decision. Right. You know, no decision is a decision of no. Um, So I encourage people and teach them how to make their, you know, how to uh, prioritize and make decisions. And then a big problem is fear. Um, And, you know, we don't have time to go into that today, but fear is one of the biggest problems because people fear, gee, what if I go down the wrong path? What if I choose the wrong thing, you know, in that exploration stage? Well, that's okay. You can, you can turn around and say, I don't want to do that anymore. You know, we really get to choose in retirement. And that's a big opportunity that we're not used to because our lives have been scripted. Yeah. And, and you know, it, there's so much to that training that you're providing, Larry. And, and and even more so, you know, it's it's what, you know, Newton's laws of physics that, you know, what you're telling people is stay in motion. That's right. Right. Because that's exactly right. Because if it is the, the moment you stop being in motion, then you start breaking down physically, emotionally and mentally. Right. The cognitive breakdown, too. And, and I'm a I'm a big Dave Goggins fan. And, you know, he makes he makes one comment where he's like, you know, you're not going to you know, I'm retired from the teams. I mean, you're not going to, you know, catch me looking like crap. Um, yes. You know, um, you know, and that's, and, and they're so true. And, and there's a, this lady that works out at my gym every morning. She's, you know, I get to the gym about five thirty AM. She's there before me yeah. every, every morning, five days a week. And she's, and finally I said, you know, remind me asking how, how old you are. And, and cause I thought she was in her seventies and she's 83 and, uh, oh my you gosh. Know, she's in there. She's, she's, lifting weights on the machines every day. And I said, you know, I just finished a book called neuroscience or neuro fitness. And it talked about the best way to one of the best ways to ward off dementia is actually physically, you know, resistance training. And, and she just says, you know, it's always something I, I just told myself now that I'm not working or I'm getting older. It's no excuse to keep my body in motion and keep on moving because I've seen my friends when they stopped they got worse. That's so. right. That's that's right. And I think it was Marcel Proust who said um, something about laughter. You don't get old because you've stopped laughing. Uh, and you don't, you don't stop laughing because you got older. You get older because you stopped laughing. Yeah. Yeah. So. <laughs> something Good. Something like that. <laughs> well, you know, we've talked with you, Larry, for now almost an hour. And it seems like really? it's 10 minutes. Yeah, absolutely. We've got so much more. <laughs> yeah, and and you know what? That hey, you know what? I mean, I would love to have you on again. Would you come on again, Larry, and and talk absolutely more about absolutely about I'd retirement? I mean, Tommy, what do you think? Absolutely. I, this is probably a two or a three session uh, uh, um, talk for sure. Yeah, and I love it. Absolutely, I, I love it because I know that what we're saying is going to have a positive impact on people. Yeah. And, and, you know, folks, um, you know, Larry mentioned it a couple times and, you know, about his coaching program and, you know, I, I've seen the effects of that. You know, I, I, in, I, in a way had his coaching program through the RMA and how to help other people right. do that. And, and folks, Larry's not a financial advisor. He's not going to, you know, he's not going to hit you with the numbers <laughs> of, could you do this financially? But if, if, and I know there's people out there listening that may be do-it-yourselfers or may have those financial advisors that are, are more just focused on the numbers and, and the investments, and, and that's all fine. Add this to your, your arrows 
in your quiver, right? Add Larry. Right. And, and you know, Larry, if people want to get this in, in what we call the 20%, right? The 80-20 rule. This truly is the 20% of retirement happiness here. How can they get your program? And you're offering something to our listeners, so I want to cover that. But yep. where can they reach you? And, and how can they start their vision and their journey to fulfillment? Yeah, absolutely. And thank you for that. Um, uh, the website to go to is called Buoy Training. So buoy, like a buoy out in the water, um, you know, it, when you're sailing, you follow the buoys and they take you to safe waters. And so that's how the name came up. But it's buoy training. It's B-U-O-Y training.com. And when they get there, they'll see the free courses. But before that, even in, in an easier way is I've got a few things I want to give to your listeners. Um, and this is a website. I hope that they, if they're driving, uh, pull over <laughs> before you write this down. And, you don't have to pull uh, over. My... Just go to our show notes. You'll, yeah, all this. There you go. Okay, notes. good. Go. Okay, good, 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 good. That's even better. Yeah, it's at LarryJacobson.com, which is my main website, uh, and then slash three free gifts, and uh, with, with hyphens, three hyphen free hyphen gifts. And there, um, I'm gonna, I'm giving the. There's a formula to find your finding your encore. I uh, won't do a. a tell you what that is, but all you have to do is go there to this website and put in your name and your email and you instantly download the formula for finding your encore. Additionally, you get my ebook, which is called the top five retirement planning secrets. And then also there's the three free lessons in the sale into retirement course. The bigger part that I want to give people today is if they sign up using this special offer for the course, for the sale into retirement course. It's now, I brought the price down to 95 bucks and I'm gonna include a one hour coaching session with me, complimentary. So you are going to you can take the course and you can contact me and I'll help you at the beginning or in the middle or the end and you're gonna get a full hour and I'm gonna solidify what you've been learning in the course. So oh, let me get this. Let me offer. get this straight, Larry. For ninety five dollars, they're yeah. going to have the foundation to their to their retirement happiness. They're going to start working with you towards that happiness for ninety five dollars if they enroll. Absolutely. Wow. That's it. Ninety five yeah. bucks to get the that's whole course month. and me. That's a month's worth of Starbucks, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> So, <laughs> well, it's yeah, or in San Francisco, it's dinner for one. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So that you know that. Thank you very much, Larry. That's that's an awesome offer, um, folks. As, Great honor. Thank you. You know, it'll be in our email blast. We'll have that that link. It'll be in the show notes. It'll be on our our social media. Um, and Larry, Great. it was awesome having you on. Thank you for what you do. Um, you know, and, and again, folks reach out to him cause we definitely are. Tom and I are definitely going to reach out to you again and we're going to talk Good. about, you know, class, fear so. and, and a couple other things. Um, it, it's been yeah. awesome, Larry. Thank you very much. It, it was a great Thanks, show. It's, it's been my pleasure and an honor. Thank you, gentlemen. So with that, folks, we are going to be taking uh, about a month hiatus because I am not sailing the world. I am going to go on a cruise line and I'm going to. Uh, eat too much and relax uh, but I'm going to go cruising for a little bit and Tommy you got some uh, 4th of July vacation but we're going to be back in July yep. and uh, we're going to continue on uh, with health in retirement and happiness in retirement until then folks enjoy the first months of summer and enjoy your retirement and retire with purpose, fulfillment and happiness take care folks it's easy to get in touch with John and Thomas. If you're more on the West Coast, give John a call at 858-935-6210. That's 858-935-6210. Or go online to gosecurus.com. That's gosecurus.com. If you're more of an East Coaster, then call Thomas, 973-394-0623. That's 973 394 
888-526-0623 and online at internationalfinancial.com. That's internationalfinancial.com. And you can, of course, always just check the description or the show notes section of today's show for all that contact information. Don't forget to subscribe on your favorite podcasting apps, and we'll see you next time on the Retire Happy Podcast. Investment advisory services offered through Brookstone Capital Management, LLC, BCM, a registered investment advisor. BCM, Securus Financial, and International Financial Advisory Group are independent of each other. Insurance products and services are not offered through BCM, but are offered and sold through individually licensed and appointed agents. The opinions expressed by John Iamarino, Thomas O'Connell, and guests on this show are their own and are based upon information considered reliable, although it should not be relied upon as such. Any statements or opinions are subject to change without notice. Investments involve risk and, unless otherwise stated, are not guaranteed. Past performance cannot be used as an indicator to determine future results. Any strategies mentioned may not be suitable for everyone. Information expressed does not take into account your specific situation or objectives and is not intended as recommendations appropriate for you. Before acting on any information mentioned, please consult with a qualified tax or investment advisor to determine if it is suitable for your specific situation. This program is designed to provide accurate and authoritative information with regard to the subjects covered.